and welcome back. All right, we are doing lesson 6.2.2 today. Um, basically, what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve equations uh, for one variable and be able to justify our steps. Uh, let's put that in English terms. We're trying to solve for x here, and we have to be able to know what we're doing on each step along the process. All right, so let's get to it here. On our first problem, here it is is checking solutions and using the distributive property. Both of these things are very important. First, we're going to be solving a problem using the distributive property, and then later I'm going to show you how to check your solutions to make sure it is correct. So, let's get down to this problem right down here. Chen's sister is making a riddle for him to solve. The sister says, I'm thinking of a number. Let's see, let's just think about that for a moment. If you're thinking of a number but you don't know what that number is, what do we do in place of a number we don't know what the number is? That's right, we put in an x for it or a variable for it. All right, so I'm thinking of a number, we call that number x. If you add 2 to the number and then triple it, you get 9. So let's just start out here. I'm thinking of a number that you then add 2 to it. So let's do that. So I'm thinking of a number, I'm going to add 2 to it. So that would be x plus 2. Does that make sense to everyone? Thinking of a number, we'll call it x, and I'm going to add 2 to it. In other words, if we take this and use algebra tiles, I'm thinking of a number, which we call x, and then I add 2 to that number. There's 1, and there's 2. So does that make sense how to use a equation map? x plus 2, the number you're thinking of, plus 2 more. And over here, algebraically, we write that as x plus 2. So then, back up here. And then you triple it. After you've done the x plus 2, now you want to triple it. Well, do you want to triple the x, or do you want to triple the 2, or do you want to triple both of them? <clears throat> and the answer is you want to triple both of those. So what we do over here is we put a parenthesis around the x plus 2, and then we're going to triple that. So we're going to put the x plus 2, and we're going to put parentheses around that so we can times that whole thing by 3. I'll get to this equals 9 thing in a moment. Over on this side, though, Let's take this, we're going to group these here, and since I'm going to triple it, each of these is not just going to have one group each, but instead, we're going to clone this, create another group, we're going to clone it again, and there's a third group. So hopefully that makes sense, how I take this here, and I've now tripled it. So I've got three x's all together, or three groups of my x plus 2. Which, by the way, now that we can use our distributive property, which we're going to get to in a moment, you're going to notice this ends up to be 3x plus 6. And I'll get to that to a moment. Now, up here, back to here. If you add your number, add 2 to your number and then triple it, this should all make sense over here, you get, you get is the same as equals, you get 9. So that's where the 9 comes from on the other side. Um, another word for this would be, would be to say if, if you add 2 to a number and triple it, it is, the, the word is also means equal. So it is 9. So that's another way of saying that. Now, let's just do this mathematically. We said this side over here is going to be the 3x, and over here is the 6. But on the other side, and I need to put these all over here, 1, 2, 3, oh, I've got to pause this for a moment. I'll be Okay, sorry about that interruption. I am back. Now I'm trying to create this 9 over here. If I can get my... Or, well, let's just do this. Let's highlight these three. We're going to group those. We're going to clone them. Ba -ba -da -ba -bum. There's three more. And here is three more. Bingo. All right, so I've got the equals 9 over there. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Now... Now, <coughs> excuse me, we have to go through and solve this. So, you might notice to get this over here, we said we had 3x plus 6 on this side. Well, that's because you take the 3 and you multiply it by the x to get 3x. And you take the 3 times the 2 to get 6. That's called distributing. When we do that, we get 3x plus 6. So the left side is the 3x plus 6. Now, the right side, nothing happened to it yet. So that's still our 9 over here. 
But now we need to solve this using inverse operations. So the first inverse operation is, is there anything being added or subtracted to the x that we can move to the other side? And the answer is, yeah, there's a 6 being added. So what's the inverse or the opposite of add 6? You should get that. Would be to subtract 6 from both sides. This way, these two here will cancel. And then the 9 minus the 6 over here will give us our leftovers, which is not what I wanted to put up there quite yet. Hello. Where's my answer? Well, it's supposed to be there, doggone it. Is that it? Come on, come on. Wow, it's just not right. Okay, well. No, that's some um, completely different. God darn it. Anyways, so when we subtract 6 from both sides, it's like putting 6 of these negatives up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. But whatever I do to one side, I must, as this is showing, do to the other side. So I need to do the same thing over here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Actually, let's just move this one up here instead of over there. I'm doing this for a reason. I'll explain in a moment. And that one up there. So all these red ones now have zeroed out. So let's ignore those for a second. Actually, I wonder if I could try something new here. Let's hit all these, and let's just hit ungroup. Ooh, very cool. All right, now I think I can take all of these, and I think I can just cut those. Goodbye, yes, I cut them all out. Let's get rid of that one, too. And then these over here, ah, these over here, I think I can cut those out. And I did. Perfect. So now what this should be reading here, it really does say it. I don't know why I can't click on this. It should say 3x right here and it should say equals 3 right there because 9 minus 6 is 3 and 3x is right there. Just pretend it says it there for a moment. Which is my 3x equals 3 right here. Now, the next step. Because I have 3x's and I don't want 3x's, I want to solve just for 1x, not for 3x's. So because I want to solve for just 1, I'm going to divide this by 3. I'm going to divide, right now x is being multiplied by 3, so the inverse or the opposite of multiply by 3 is divide by 3. But again, whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other side. So when I take and I take 3x's and I divide that by 3, let's see if this will work for me, I get an answer of x equals 1. Because when I divide 3x by 1, these two magically disappear. And when I divide 3 by 3, these will magically disappear, and I'm left with x equals 1, which is right here. Now, I've already pulled this stupid thing up here. It wasn't supposed to be stupid, but it's, it's just what shows up now. This is where we get to the point where I said early on we're going to check our solutions. So, let's do that. You might notice this equation, 3 parenthesis x plus 2 equals 9. Well, 3 parenthesis x plus 2 equals 9. Only instead of the x now, I plug in my answer of 1. Now, what's really cool about this, you can make sure your answer is right before you move on here. And if you did something wrong, then you can fix it. Or you can come up to Mr. Anderson and say, Mr. Anderson, what did I do wrong here? But follow this doing order of operations. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 then times 3 is 9. And you can see 9 equals 9. If both sides are in balance, you know your answer is correct. If the two sides were not in balance, for example, let's say we got the answer of x equals 0 for some reason. Let's say you thought 3 divided by 3 is 0, which would be wrong. But if you did, you would have plugged in a 0 here. 0 plus 2 would have been 2. 2 times 3 would have been 6, and you would have had 6 equals 9. Well, that's not true. So then you would have known 0 would not have been your correct answer. That's when you can come up and ask me for help or just try and do it again. Hopefully that makes sense to you. If not, replay this portion of the video. Now I'm going to move through this kind of quickly. All right. That is the same problem. Why did that do that? Here we go. I've got 4. I've got an x plus 3. Come on up here, x plus 3. 
x plus 1, 2, 3, and that's going to equal 8. The only thing is, though, is that I'm going to group these together so I can make this faster. Let's just go infinite cloner for a second. And we've got four groups of this x plus 3 right there. So I've got four groups of x plus 3, so four groups of x plus 3, and that equals 8. So there's 8 over here, 2, 4, 6, 8. Now that I did that, we will ungroup those somehow. Do, 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 do. that one off. Select all. And I wanted to, I thought I said ungroup. There we go. And ungroup again if I can. There are lots of fun little things now. Okay. Now, when you distribute the 4 times the x, you get 4x. When you distribute the 4 times 3, you get your 12. You're going to record those steps over here for me. I'm doing it just on the mat to show you. Then, we need to move these 12 to this side. So when I do that, I'm going to add 12 of these negatives. I'm not literally going to do this. I'm going to add 12 negatives over here. Well, when I add 12 negatives over here, the first 8 will cover up these right here, if that makes sense. So these 8 will be gone, but there's still 4 more negatives I'm adding on this side. 1, 2, 3, 4. So you should notice, when I added the 12 negatives over here, all of these... That's not what I quite tried to do there. All of these over here cancel. When I added the 12 negatives over here, these 8 canceled, but then I still had 4 more negatives that did not cancel. So I'm left with my 4x equals negative 4. Now, my next step is because I've got 4 x being multiplied by 4, I need to divide both sides by 4 to get rid of 3 of these because I only want one of them left over when I'm done. So I'm going to take and divide both sides by 4, leaving me with x equals negative 1. And then you're going to plug in negative 1 up here and show your work to check it. Negative 1 plus 3 is positive 2. Positive 2 times 4 is 8. So 8 equals 8. So you should get that. In addition to this, you're going to put in your notes. Um, no, you're not going to put that in there because I'm not too concerned about that one. Let's see if I want you doing anything here. No, that's the, oh, there's your work shown right there, but you still need to do the check. So make sure you copy this down and make sure you understand what you're doing. I wouldn't write it this way. You see how they're kind of writing it this way? Actually, they made a mistake. This is, oh, I, they did a different way. It's kind of the beauty about algebra. There's different ways to do it. They did a different way. I don't necessarily like their way, but if you understand it, take a look at that. See what they did and see if you do like what they did. Otherwise, forget that page. Just show me the steps on here on this one that we just did and show me the check on there and that's it have a great day bye bye